One of the main reasons people continue to struggle with their mental illness is because we get enabled by the people in our lives. That's why in this video, we're gonna be talking about how Kim Kardashian keeps enabling Kanye West. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community or pop culture in general to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being, or it might be how to help a loved one who is struggling with mental illness, the do's and don'ts. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And you know what another good reason is for you to go follow me on Instagram? It's because I get some amazing fans fan art like this right here. Absolutely love it. I love sharing it. I love seeing all that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of art. So if you got some, tag me in a post. I'll share it. I absolutely love that stuff. But yeah, so anyways, we're going to be talking about Kanye West, his bipolar disorder diagnoses or not diagnoses. I'll talk more about that. Kim Kardashian enabling him, but we're also going to be talking about a few topics in this. And this is extremely important. Like one of the reasons I do this channel is to educate people about mental illness. I've received a lot of comments from people who say, yo, I like watching your videos because even if it's something that I don't personally struggle with, it helps me understand other people in my lives, right? So there's obviously a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things, right? So when it comes to helping somebody with mental illness, we need to really look at what we're doing and are we keeping that person sick? See, when we think about enabling, we often think of like addiction, like drug addiction, alcoholism. You know, that's something that I experienced, you know, in my active addiction, being enabled. But part of it was I had to take responsibility for myself too. So I do wanna make it clear, I am not putting all the blame on Kim Kardashian in this. I will be talking about how Kanye West is legit screwing up as well. All right, so I wanna pull a few different instances from 2008 18 and discuss what's been going on and what we're all seeing. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people are seeing. I was actually going to wait to do this video um, until Kanye West um, was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I know that they already recorded it. I just don't know when it's being released. So I might do a follow-up video um, after he goes on that podcast. All right. But first, let's talk about the incident over at TMZ. So yeah, this, this was a huge bummer. All right. Like Kanye West, when he was going around supporting Donald Trump, like do your thing, man, whoever you support, go for it. But when he was at TMZ and going on his, his rant, and when he talked about slavery being a choice, I'm like, oh, oh no. And a lot of people freaked out. So those of you who haven't got the memo yet, I'm actually half black. And like some of this stuff, I'm just like, damn Kanye, right? But this is what we're looking at with untreated mental illness. You know what I mean? Because Kanye West released his, you know, album, you know, where he talked about being bipolar, right? And the struggles of being bipolar. And a lot of people started to empathize with him, but, when, when you go out and do those things, like it starts to cause backlash, obviously. And like, and people have been stuck in this weird place where they feel bad for him, but then they also get mad at him. And this is, this is, this is what happens with people with mental illness. Like if you have somebody with mental illness in your life, whether it's bipolar, whether it's borderline personality disorder, maybe it's anxiety, maybe it's depression, whatever it is, you can get upset with them, right? But at the same time, it's like, uh, do I feel bad about that? You know what I mean? But the issue was, after this, Kim Kardashian, who is Kanye West's wife, she goes out and there was a clip from Keeping Up With The Kardashians where she says that the media twisted his words out of, out of uh, context, right? And he never really said that, right? And like, this was absolutely mind blowing and people were freaking out because there was video evidence, video evidence of uncut footage of Kanye West saying what happened up until that point. And Kim Kardashian was defending what he's saying. And she was almost gaslighting the entire planet by saying, no, that's not what he said. But Kanye West actually later came out and he apologized for this. He apologized for what he said because he knew, he knew that it hurt people, right? And this is one of the things too, um, I'm a fan of Kanye West, was a fan of Kanye West. Like he, his earlier albums, like College Dropout, you know, and everything like that, like they were really inspirational to me. Like I used to love Kanye West because he always used to rap about like 
how, you know, coming up from nothing and turning it into something. And like, he was driven by people telling him what he couldn't do, right? So I absolutely respected that about him. But things have changed over the years. Now, the next instance was when Kanye West went to Donald Trump's, uh, you know, to the Oval Office to have that conversation. And this, this made me sad more than anything. And this, this section isn't so much about Kim Kardashian because I don't know how much she got involved with that. But just seeing, like, I watched that whole thing and I was just sad. I was sad because I look back at my addiction, right? And, like, people would, like, parade me around and I was almost like this laughing stock. Like, there was only, to my knowledge, <laughs> to my knowledge, there's only one video of me being drunk still out there, right? And my friends bring it up like once a year and they show it to me, I'm like, oh, and it's it's extremely embarrassing. It's extremely embarrassing, right? Like, it's like, I was there just making an absolute fool of myself while everybody was kind of just laughing and just seeing the way like Donald Trump was like looking at Kanye while Kanye was going off on his like rants and tangents in the Oval Office and saying all these things, like it really just, it really just bummed me out, right? But. Part of this, which we're gonna to touch on again, is Kanye West in that meeting said that he was misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder, right? So this is something that we need to we need to remember because I'm gonna be talking about that in a sec. Most recently was his Twitter rant about Drake. Oh lordy lordy. He was on Twitter just acting a fool, just going off. I remember Tristan and I were sitting on the couch and we're like, what is happening? Just watching all of Kanye West's tweets and I'm not gonna read them. There's plenty of videos out there where people are reading them and going through them, but he's going off about Drake and it's just, it's like going through this episode, right? And Kanye West has talked about how he hasn't been taking his medication and all of that. And the saddest part about it was when when all this happened, Kim Kardashian gets on Twitter the next day and I'll put the Twitter, uh, the tweet up on the screen right now, but she said something along the lines of like, he's a genius and the smartest person she's ever met, right? And this is enabling. Like this is enabling. Now, like we gotta understand, you can be a mentally ill genius, all right? Like this is possible. But when it comes to our mental illness, is it causing harm? Is this causing harm to ourselves or to others, right? And to have your, your significant other, your wife, especially, especially that they're in the spotlight enabling that behavior, that is a huge, huge, huge issue. Because why is somebody going to get help when they keep getting, you know, uh, positive reinforcement from the person who's closest to them in their life? You know what I mean? So there's a great book that I read and God, what was it called? I think it was called like The Power of Different. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen and link it down in the description below. But anyways, it talks about the good aspects of mental illness from depression to anxiety. It talks about bipolar disorder, talks about ADHD. I highly recommend you read it. Like if you're somebody who, you know, is still coming to terms with accepting your mental illness, check out this book. But anyways, part of the book was talking about how people with bipolar disorder are often very creative. This is one of their strengths, right? And one of the things is they don't like taking medications because they feel it's going to hinder their creativity. But bipolar disorder is a disorder of extreme highs and extreme lows, right? And most people, when they find the right balance of medications, they're still just as creative as ever, but they're in more control of their state and what's happening. The last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about Kanye specifically. And again, my videos are for you. So I want to talk to you, right? Okay. So I was watching. Um, an interview with Charlemagne the God over on uh, The Daily Show. I'm gonna put a screenshot because I don't wanna get a copyright claim. But anyways, um, I'm reading Char Charlemagne uh, the God's book right now about anxiety and it's about mental health in black America and getting help and all of that. But Trevor Noah asked Charlemagne about Kanye West and Charlemagne says that Kanye West is full of crap, right? And they're, they're having a conversation about how Kanye's weaponizing his mental illness, right? So he talks about being diagnosed. He gets, he gets all this, uh, you know, sympathy and all these other things and people are like, oh, we can't make fun of Kanye, he has a mental illness, right? But then he goes to the Oval Office and says that he was misdiagnosed, all right? So think about that. So he says, okay, never mind, I don't. But then when the beef started with Drake and then Ariana Grande got involved too, then Kanye West is saying, oh, oh, now you're talking crap to people with mental illness. Like, don't do that. 
Like, don't do that. I'm telling you right now, that is not cool. That is not cool at all. Like, for those who are trying to, like, you know, increase awareness and decrease the stigma, like, this is one of the reasons why people don't take mental illness seriously because we pull BS like that, right? Oh, you can't get mad at me. I have anxiety. Oh, don't get mad at me. I have this. You know what I mean? Then, like, when we're playing the victim and we pick and choose when we get to play the victim, it is messed up, all right? And here's the thing, too. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I don't like about the mental health conversation is... It's almost like, and I don't like using this word, I don't like using this word, but it already popped in my head. It's almost ableist, right? It's almost like saying like, oh, anybody who struggles with a mental illness, they're just this poor little baby and can't do anything for themselves. Like, no, screw that, all right? Most people who are struggling with mental illness, like the most common forms of mental illness are anxiety and depression, okay? like. There's this misconception that when we say the word mentally ill or someone's not mentally healthy, we're talking about extremes. Like, you know, like schizophrenia, you know what I mean? Or like uh, people who are psychopaths or, you know, anything like that. Like you guys, like people with mental health issues have the ability in many cases to make decisions, all right? It is difficult and that's why it's important that we have a strong support system around us, but that's why it's also important for people to call us out on our BS. Like for example, going back to the dynamic between Kim and Kanye, I would hope, I would hope that my beautiful girlfriend Tristan, if she saw me start picking and choosing when I decide to use my mental health as an excuse for my behavior, I would hope that my girlfriend would call me out on that stuff, right? So again, don't go out doing that. And if you have somebody in your life who's doing that, call them out on it. Let them know. Say, hey, it's not cool. You can't pick and choose. Like either you want to get help and you want to get better or you want to sit in the problem. But here at The Rewired Soul, we talk about the problem, but we focus on the solution. All right. But anyways, I hope there's things that you can learn from both sides of this, whether it's um, you're possibly enabling somebody in your life with mental health issues by not encouraging them to go get help, to take their damn medications, to get treatment, to see a, uh, a therapist or to see a psychologist or to see a psychiatrist or whatever it is. And I hope you see it from the side of somebody with mental health issues, right? Quit making excuses for your crappy behavior. I always say this, mental health issues are not an excuse to be a dick, all right? So anyways, anyways, let me know down in the comments below. Have you had people in your life enable your mental health issues, all right? Or have you enabled somebody's mental health issues? Maybe you didn't even realize you were doing it. Let's have a conversation down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get access to some exclusive cool stuff, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.